Welcome. You are tuned in to Curiosity Not Judgment. My name is Birga. And I'm Jerry. So last week we did a kind of a rebroadcast of a previous podcast. Gary was traveling, we were having some scheduling issues and we couldn't get together face to face, but republished a podcast from a few months back and got a really interesting comment that I thought we would start off with addressing today for this episode and kind of see where the conversation takes us. But right off the bat, I want to say thanks to Jeff for taking the time to make a comment on the YouTube channel. But so we were talking about in that particular episode about guardrails. How do we set up systems to protect us from kind of AI going crazy and taking over the world? And how do we have guardrails in our life in general? And so Jeff's comment was, he said, we need RI or real intelligence to design and enforce guardrails for AI. And I am more concerned about the lack of real intelligence in society than I am fearful of AI. Great discussion, he says. Mm. Yeah, that's a that's a great comment. Um, RI versus AI, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, and you got to be careful with the, uh, so wisdom isn't the definition of terms. You know, what is AI? And we've discussed that in a couple of episodes now. What is RI? What is real intelligence? Mm -hmm. And is that in the in the eye of the beholder? Is there a um, a, a, a standard or, or a, mm. a line or a book or a reference, I guess I should say, for what our I is. Um, is my real intelligence different than your real intelligence? Remember, we've talked about mm -hmm. street smarts and book smarts right. and all kinds of different kind of smarts. Um, and and what is real intelligence? But, but I get where he's going, and that is um, it's going to take some real intelligence I think, though, that we sometimes real intelligence um, causes us to think we know what we're doing and we might clamp down too much of it or release too much of it. Mm. And I think there's probably some happy mediums in there somewhere. And I think we're going to discover things along the way. We're clearly at the we don't know what we don't know stage. Absolutely. And so as we know it, um, Jerry Seinfeld this week, uh, last week, did the commencement speech at Duke, and I really loved his three things, right? His three things were, you know, work hard, pay attention, and fall in love. And, and I think that could be applied here. Um, you know, work hard to monitor the AI experience and to work with it and use it. It's not really good at hands and feet right now, so we all know <laughs> when that. When it's creating images, When yeah. it's creating images, so we all know that. And so... And then pay attention. The day it starts getting really good at fingers and feet mm. um, is a day that's probably going to mark some other milestones too. Yeah. And what is it doing and what is it being used for? I read something over the weekend about a comedian that said that he's um, using AI to make himself not come across X so okay. much. Right? So is that a good use of it, etc.? Is it changing our personalities? Is it changing the way we... We do work. Um, Jerry Seinfeld in that same speech said, artificial intelligence is a funny thing. He says, um, here we are as human society, we're smart enough to create artificial intelligence, dumb enough to need it, and stupid enough not to know whether or not we did a good thing or not. Yeah. And, he, and he talks about artificial intelligence and, and he says the, the, the slogan for chat GBT should be the opposite of Nike instead of just do it, it's I can't do it, yeah. which is why I need AI. Anyway. A lot of stuff there that we could unpack, uh, mm -hmm. but I think it's really good, and I think we do need to pay attention. I don't think we can put on guardrails at the start of this mm. that that work forever. Well, so I think then the dif the difference in my mind instantly goes from training wheels to guardrails, right? You do want training wheels at the beginning because you got to steady this thing. You've got to teach it how to work within the parameters of the human experience, kind of. And I guess even I know enough to know that I don't even know what I'm talking about besides, you know, like a fraction of an understanding. But what what you said a few minutes ago is, will it change us? I think the answer is absolutely it's going to change us. Sure. Just as social media has changed or us. Or anything and else, yes. The way that the younger generation, I'm going to say like Gen Z, Alpha Gen, you know, these I'm going to say kids, respectfully, that have grown up in a culture where they have known nothing but cell phones, they have known nothing but internet connectivity, they've known nothing but platforms in which to share an experience publicly. They are changed from 
a generation that did not grow up that way and can't understand why and how things are going the way that they're going. And so with artificial intelligence, I think it's just a matter of time. How quickly is going to be the real question, but yes, it's going to change us. And when it begins to be able to create hands and feet, what else can it create, right? And, and how easily are we going to be able to distinguish between real intelligence and artificial intelligence? And, and is it a problem if we can't? Is it a problem if we can't? Um, is intelligence intelligence, whether it's artificial or real? Mm. Um, is intelligence, um, are we creating a framework or a map mm. which is useful? And can AI help us do that? And can AI help us refine our map to where it's more useful? In that case, it, that's a good use mm. of AI. But I mean, speaking of maps, I remember the time when you used to be traveling across the country with a big atlas and mm -hmm. you'd run off the map on one page and so it would say go to, you know, yep. 3G yep. on page such and such and you'd go and you'd flip the pages and you'd go and you'd find it there. We had paper maps and frequently I'm in a rental car using my, I don't even care what kind of a car it is as long as it has Apple Play, right? Mm -hmm. um, I've got my navigation going and I sometimes think, oh my goodness, how would I be doing this? on paper maps these days, but we all did it mm -hmm. and it was possible. And was it more of a hassle? One could argue, I don't know, but you're right. So, um, people today, young people today who grow up with navigation on their phone, they can't even imagine a world where you had to go find a paper map or yeah. buy one in a gas station yep. as you're traveling across the country. Same thing. AI is going to provide a set of maps, and a mental model um, that will be different than what we currently have. I'll give you a very real story about maps and AI versus RI. So I think it's okay to share this because she shared this publicly a couple times, but my younger daughter very recently wanted to go visit White Sands with one of the international students who wanted to see it before her time in the US was over. So White Sands is in New Mexico. It is this remarkable place with this, is it, What's the the sand made of? It, 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 it's it's sand. It's gypsum. It's gypsum. A, it's a, yeah. I couldn't remember that word, but it's white. Just like as far as the eye can see, white, and it makes for stunning photos. You can sled down it. It's a remarkable place. If you're ever in New Mexico, go visit White Sands. Anyway, they put in White Sands into the GPS, and they set off on their merry way. And so she says, at some point, it says, you know, turn here, and she's turning off of a paved highway and gets onto this dirt road. And she's like, that's kind of weird, but uh -huh. like, of course my GPS is going to tell me where to go, right? So rumble, rumble, rumble down the, the bumpy dirt road until you get to a security fence with like radioactive signs, military guards, do not enter, uh, 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 wrong way, right? And so, yeah, it took her to White Sands, but it took her to like the... White Sands <laughs> Missile Range. Uh-huh. Exactly. And so... I saw where this was going. Yeah. The, the question then becomes, you know, should the GPS function know inherently if you are a civilian that you're not going to go to the missile range, that you want to go to the visitor center, does there need to be some sort of a real intelligence applied to the artificial intelligence of getting from point A to point B when it's a very commonly known tourist destination? You know, all of these things kind of come up in my mind. But then conversely, for the individual driving, in this case, my daughter, you know, we have become so reliant on our technology that sometimes we don't stop to use our own real intelligence. We depend on the artificial because it's so much easier. It's easier to not think or to not invest the, the brain power into doing something. And so, you know, granted, she'd not been there or she hadn't, she hadn't been there as a driver, right? So she didn't know what what to do and she didn't know that that was not the way to go but you know for for somebody more seasoned that maybe had been there before the second you get called to turn onto a bumpy dirt road something should say wait we, we, we are taking a detour here that i'm not familiar with this doesn't seem right but it's that moment it's that intersection between ri and ai that we have to be willing to spend the time in because otherwise we, we let the computers rule that's right and and now what's ironic about that there's many many things we can unpack in that, in that one story, but you know, the, the GPS system, the navigation system gave her the right answer to the wrong question. Mm -hmm. 
Ah. Right? Her question was White Sands, which was incomplete. Mm. It's almost like being in Albuquerque, and I always tell people, don't leave off the northeast, southeast, southwest yeah. off of the address because you have the same road in different yes. uh, parts of the city that uh, if you put in an address, you can be taken 10, 20 miles away from where you intend to go. Yep. You'll get to the correct address. It'll be in the wrong part of the city because mm -hmm. our city is in quadrants. Good point. And it's the same thing here. She didn't say White Sands Tourist Center or Visitor Center. Mm -hmm. She said White Sands. It completed with Missile Range. Yep. Both are true, mm -hmm. but one was incomplete. So how do we know? And this is back to the you don't know what we don't know um, type of thing. I remember when we first got our first navigation in a van I was living in California in Half Moon Bay. Um, our house was literally on the ocean. And our uh, our GPS wasn't sophisticated at the time. Mm -hmm. And the, the GPS kept saying, stop, you're entering the ocean. <laughs> it's like, no, we weren't. Now, we were very close to it. Sure. But it didn't have the level of accuracy yet yeah. to know that. And we're going to have those types of things going on now. GPS, I'm not sure how much AI is in GPS these days. I think it's just right now a lookup of a book of facts. But that GPS, there was an incomplete transaction there. Mm -hmm. And the same thing is with AI. I think a lot of people would like to use AI more. They don't know how to use it. And mm -hmm. what that means is how to ask it the right questions yeah. in the right format. There are people who do this every day now, yeah. and they're very good at it. But yeah. they will tell you, that there's a way to interact with, with uh, ChatGPT or any of the AI engines, and there's incorrect ways to interact with. Mm -hmm. So at what point do we become savvy in how to interact? So in addition to the guardrails, there's the interaction with mm -hmm. a given thing, yeah. and what do we do with that interaction, and how do we respond? Yeah. You know, thinking back to movies 20, 30 plus years ago when it was when they were cast in a futuristic time frame right they would imagine what the world was going to be like in 2020 etc it's interesting to see what they thought was going to be the reality for us but inevitably when there is a creation a, a director and a writer put together the storyline around what the future is going to look like it would always bring in various elements from what it considered kind of like the staples of what makes a person human, right? The artistic, the, the sensory, the, the mathematics, the reading, the computations, all of the things, right, that would, would inherently make somebody a complete functioning person in their fullness. And so when we start to think about AI and as it is being crafted, to do things and to simulate and replicate the human experience or human thinking, are we putting in all of the necessary ingredients, so to speak, like the, the stew of what makes a human being? Do we have all the right ingredients that we're putting into AI? Well, and this is the thing, and this is why some people would say that AI will never uh, totally replace, you know, AI will not totally replace our eye. And that is because it, lacks the human experience. Mm. Uh, now, you can catalog the human experience. You can make predictions of what people will do and won't do, et cetera, et cetera. I think that those kinds of things will eventually occur. But what is the richness of the human experience? If you concentrate on AI, what is AI trying to do? It's trying to give you an outcome. Mm -hmm. It's trying to give you an answer. And I think that's where we lose it with AI is the human experience is not about the answer. It's not about the outcome. It's about the richness of the experience mm. along the way. That's a fascinating statement that, so I'm thinking instantly of two things. You know, our emotional response to the good and our emotional response to the bad. AI will never be able to understand the emotional response. And so if its entire design is really targeted at just getting you an answer, you know, you can't say to chat GPT, how do I get out of suffering? Well, maybe you could. I would be curious what answer it would provide, right? But it is so individualistic. It is so personal to the type of suffering and the, the nature of suffering and the other people involved in the suffering, right? There, there is no formula that any type of computer program could produce that's going to give you a satisfactory answer. 
But then on the, on the flip side, if you're trying to em embrace and fully experience like the, the love and the, you know, all of the positive things that happen with the good emotions, you know, how, how do I get to that feeling chat GPT? How do I, how do I get my life situated so that I can be in this place of love and fulfillment? I don't think it can answer that either. No. Uh, now I think that it can, you know, you bring up suffering. If you've got a malady, I think that a lot of people believe that artificial intelligence will eventually replace the doctor visit because there are a list of questions that a doctor asks sure. that they can then take in the data and make rational decisions. However, that's a diagnosis, not a prescription. So that's the difference between the process and the answer. So the diagnosis is, is the richness of things that AI is, having a, is gonna have a problem with. And in your statement, I, if I'm not wrong, you were making the assumption that AI can't know you as a person. It can learn you. If it's doing a proper diagnosis, it would ask you some questions. What is your age? What is your sex? What is your um, your uh, ethnicity? What is your um, you know what is your environmental mm -hmm. uh, things? And then from there, it could learn to ask the right questions mm -hmm. for a malady. Now, suffering mm -hmm. is an emotional malady as opposed to a physical malady. Right, right. So maybe it's going to have a more difficult time mm -hmm. because it would literally have to get to know you, which is apparently what the psychiatric or, or counseling process is, mm -hmm. where they get to know you as a person and how you will respond to certain things, and then maybe try to decrease your suffering. Although some people in life, pack in the road less travel, would say that you can't reduce your suffering, you work through it and grow as a result. Mm -hmm. And so is AI capable of helping you do that? So I, a lot in there mm -hmm. of what you just said, but I think if we, I think right now the way we think of AI is a shortcut to an answer mm. or to an outcome. And I think that then the danger there is to neglect the process. Mm. So let's start to introduce the curious questions about this topic. Yep. So. If the, if the statement is AI is producing a shortcut to an outcome, I think the very first curious question has to be, is the shortcut really the best thing for you in the endeavor to get to X? What's your goal? Is your goal the answer? Is your goal the outcome? Or is your goal the process? Is your goal to learn, to grow? Um, you know, look, I was, uh, I'm not proud to admit this now, but I used to cram for tests in college. Mm -hmm. um, I was doing a shortcut to the goal. I am sure that if I was, if my professor was there for the right reasons, the professor would wish for me that I learned how to do the process mm -hmm. to get to the outcome, not the outcome. Earlier, you were given the example about your daughter going on the wrong road. I remember very vividly back in whatever it was, fifth, sixth grade, when my math teacher was trying to teach me the art of estimation. In other words, let's estimate the answer before mm -hmm. we go get the answer. And I used to think that was such a big waste of time. Why do I need to estimate? I'll just do the work real quick and do the answer. Mm -hmm. But the beauty of an estimate done well is, is that you discover if you're off track in an answer. Mm -hmm. If you carry the wrong number or whatever, and you get an answer that's an order of magnitude off, if you'd estimated and taken the couple of seconds it takes to estimate beforehand, you'd realize that's a wrong answer. If you haven't done that, you're going to go with that answer and possibly design a bridge that's going to fall down. Mm. That, and that was, the, that was the beauty of the estimation. So that is a real intelligence thing that helps with the artificial intelligence thing. In other words, the curious question here is, what can I do to utilize AI for its best and highest purpose for me? Mm. And I think I have to figure out what is that purpose for me? Am I just trying to look something up quick and have it do the research so that I have that knowledge from which I can establish a framework by which to make better decisions over here? Mm -hmm. Yes. Or is it to give me the best decision over here? If I get the, if I'm if I'm trying to shortcut a process by which I learn and there's a diagnosis before a prescription, 
then that's probably not the best use. I know this is a little bit off from our, our point right now, but I do want to throw this in there. If somebody's listening and says, I don't care at all about AI, this doesn't affect me, this doesn't impact me, be a future forecaster for just a moment about why these conversations are really critical to have now. The, the, the criticality of this is it goes way beyond AI, and that is think about the process versus the outcome. Think about the, the diagnosis, not just the prescription. Think about the way you're solving a problem and how you're solving a problem and not just the answer. Mm -hmm. Whether it's AI or your use of social media or how would I use a computer or a map or anything, mm -hmm. a GPS, yep. um, that's the key. Yeah. How we use AI as a tool toward that is, I guess that's the thinking. The curious question is, how can I use AI as a tool in the process as opposed to a shortcut to an answer? Okay. And I, I know that you read a lot. You do a lot of understanding around kind of trends and what's to come. And so I think we can realistically expect that AI is going to be integrated into every aspect of life in the very near future from you know, buying a car to going grocery shopping to, of course, online purchases. But then it's absolutely already impacting the education system. Mm -hmm. So I, I, don't, I don't think that this is a conversation that people can just say, eh, this doesn't apply to me. I'm, I'm in a stage of life where I'm never going to log into chat GPT. That may be, but is it going to be logging into you? Yeah, and I think that the, the key here is not to get, uh, not to respond out of fear yeah. and say, look, oh my God, AI is going to take over the world. We're closer and closer to 2001 of Space Odyssey than we've ever been before. Hal is going to shut us all down before we can shut him down and, you know, oh, woe is me and hide in a corner, mm -hmm. right? That's not the right approach. Well, I wouldn't recommend that approach yeah. if that's what approach that works for you, more power to you. But the point is, how can we use our overall sense? How do we pay attention? Work hard, pay attention, fall in love. I'm, I'm going to just start saying that all the time. My, my Jerry Seinfeld rules of life. Pay attention. Yeah. Um, you know, am I seeing something um, that doesn't look right. Mm. Am are you, I? Are you seeing an image with six or seven fingers? Exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah. If that's not right, don't just assume that's the right answer. Mm -hmm. Especially if it's got six fingers. Ah, maybe there's a clue. That's not necessarily the right answer. Yeah. But but be aware. But stay aware. Don't just blindly follow anything or anyone. Yeah. Including AI. Yeah. What's the curious question here? Am I following something that makes sense? Am I, am I paying attention to what's in front of me? Well, and am I executing my own RI, real intelligence, in this journey of, you know, a, a more and more AI-dominated dom world? To create my own experience, which is the goal of life. There you go. Just like that. Wrapped it up with a bow. <laughs> hey, thanks so much. We always appreciate you listening. And, of course, we appreciate your comments. I know this can be really heady stuff. And I know that this sounds like... You know, we're talking about future stuff, but I think that future is coming really fast and we would love to see what you have to say. Has AI crept into your work? Has it crept into your school experience? Has it crept into your shopping? Where are you seeing it happen and what have been your responses to it? We'd, we'd love to see some of your reactions to all of this. So check it out. You can do the comment right there on the YouTube channel, or of course you can always drop us a note right there at the website, which is curiositynotjudgment.com. And we will catch up with you again next week. Take care.